Hey guys, Gonpla Newbie here. Today I'll be unboxing and review the paint mixer made by Dispaya. But before we get into this, I've also made another similar review video for another paint mixer by Alchemy. I'll link the video at the end so you can check it out if you're interested. And after using the Alchemy paint mixer for quite a while, I figured I should give my updated thoughts on it. There are some problems that I thought were minor nitpicks at first. For example, the placement issue. The positioning of the bottle on the platform can be difficult to get right for some bottles. So sometimes I have to reposition the bottle multiple times just to get it to work properly. But at that point, it's already giving me more problems than solutions. Another update is that the magnets started getting stuck and would not spin. I have to open up the case, nudge the magnet to get it to unstuck, and then put everything back together just to use it again. It happens randomly, so now I kept it unscrewed in case it got stuck again. Anyway, that's my update for that mixer. Fortunately, Dispaya was kind enough to send me the new paint mixer. So yeah, quick disclaimer, this product was sent to me for free, but I'm not paid to promote it. So I'll be giving my unbiased honest review for this product. So here goes the unboxing of the product. Well, I don't have a lot of Dispaya products, but I think they have awesome packaging design. It looks and feels expensive, and I thought they seriously included a user manual DVD in this box. But it's a USB to micro USB cable and a bag of magnetic stirring rods. The cable itself is 1 meter long, and it feels pretty high quality compared to the cables that came included with other more expensive devices that I own. So I placed the rods on the box itself and noticed some magnetic attraction and the strength of the magnets did not disappoint. Anyway, let's check out these stirring rods. From a distance, these felt a bit thicker than the one that came included with the Alchemy paint mixer. Well, marginally. Let's check out the main box. Inside we have the Kerry? Kariwi? Karibdis? Karibdis. I'm not sure if I'm saying this correctly, but if you're wondering, it is a sea monster in Greek mythology. They've provided a rubber mat for the platform, a set of rubber feet for the base of the mixer, and a user manual that consists of 50% product information followed by 50% of motivational message about samurai? It seems like you can either use the batteries or the micro USB. Using both at the same time would probably break the device. Gotta say, the wrapping does feel nice. Let's put on the rubber pads. After testing the device off camera, I can understand the amount of rubber pads needed. I'll show you guys why in a minute. Instead of the traditional on off button on the device, they opted for a sensor here. While the build quality itself is generally pretty good, the area near the USB port isn't tightly sealed. Inside the battery compartment, they included another warning that you shouldn't use batteries along with the micro USB cable. So I'm not even gonna try with the batteries. Being able to use USB cable to power the device is one of the main reasons to pick this over other devices. The touch sensor is pretty responsive, but maybe a bit too sensitive? By just holding the mixer, you could accidentally turn it on, but it's not a major problem most of the time. There's a neat blue LED to indicate if it's turned on or off. Let's mix some paint. Yeah, it gets pretty loud. The magnets are very strong, but would it be able to mix the arch nemesis of magnetic mixers? Yeah, too bad it doesn't work. While the pigments of this surface is really thick if it's all subsided to the bottom, I don't think this is the reason why it's not working. You see, the base of the bottle itself is not letting the stirring rod to spin accordingly. So if you were to get this type of mixer, you have to avoid bottles like this. However, if the punt of the bottle is not too steep, then it will still work. For instance, this bottle is similar in size, but the punt itself is not too steep. But what about small paint bottles? Previously, I was having a hard time getting the Alchemy mixer to work with small bottles. Because of its small surface area to work with, it can be really difficult to get the placement right. With this mixer, I found out that you have to hold it in place when you're working with small bottles. The magnetic attraction is too strong, it will displace the bottle and the stirring rod will not spin properly. So I have to place it on the center while holding it down to get it to work correctly. This is where the rubber pad would help keep the bottle in place. 
So that's basically it in terms of its functions. So to summarize, the product design is pretty slick. The micro USB cable option is definitely a plus. No more going through the trouble of replacing batteries. The magnets are very strong, and because of this, it doesn't take too long for it to mix your paints. A short 3 second burst is enough to get the job done. The quality of the cable is awesome, and the cable length is decent. As for its drawbacks, I couldn't find much problems with it, well at least for now. Perhaps just a slight nitpicks with the placement of the touch sensor. Unless you absolutely don't move the device at all, chances are every time you move the device, you will turn it on accidentally. Another thing to note is that the punt or the base of the bottle could be a problem like what I highlighted previously. Other than that, overall it's a pretty good product and it's not too expensive. If you guys are interested, I might post an updated review of this mixer after a couple months of usage. So let me know if you are interested or if you guys have anything else you would like me to cover, then leave a comment down below. Please like the video if you like it and subscribe if you would like to see more of my future contents. Thank you guys for watching and stay safe.